Hello and welcome to yet another Blender Dharma video. Uh, this one is basically going to be showing you how I did the shader on this. And I'm not going to show you how to do the animation. Uh, I did that on the video right before this one. And I'm not really going to be uh, showing you how to set up the outline and everything. Again, did that on the video before this one. I'll, I'll put a link to that below this. But I'm just going to show you how this shader works and give you ideas on how to think about shaders when you're going through them and setting them up. Okay, this same concept was used to do this one. It's a, pretty much the same setup. And also, this one, which is the, the one I showed in the other video. And this one. Now again, I'm not going to be showing you how to do these animations. <coughs> because I already showed that in the other video. But what I will do is at the end of this video, if you're interested, I'll show you briefly what I did to get this. It's only a very slight variation of the animation and it'll only take a second. So let's get started with the shader. Okay, here you can see I've got Blender opened up and I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. This is the exact file. Let me wireframe this. This is the exact file that uh, that that movie was made from with the halftone animation. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is you'll notice this is running at about 15 frames a second. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go into my subdivisions and turn them down. Oops. A bit. So that'll speed it up. Now it's running at 24 and everybody's happy. Okay, now that is this as you know from the other video the outline this black outline is generated with a, a solidify modifier set to a different color okay and then I turn the the normals uh, I turned the normals around and, and turned on back face culling. Again, that is explained in the other video. So, we're just going to show you how this halftone shader works. The basic concept of the whole thing is that... Oh, and just so you know how this scene is set up. I've got this thing animating, and then I've got this white um, plane in the background. They're both just set to a mission. And the reason I did that is because if I turn the environment to white, then the um, then it changes the lighting on the object. Which, although it doesn't matter for a mission, it does matter for a diffuse, which is what I'm going to bring in to do the shading. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, let me get the diffuse in here so I can show you what's going on. Uh, diffuse shader. Yay! Easy thing. All the way at the bottom, the color management, you set this to standard. If this is set to filmic, you'll never get the right colors. Okay? Now, so make sure that's set to standard. Let's get going. Now, if I take this diffuse shader, let's pull this out. If I take this diffuse shader and stick it in there, it looks like this. Okay, we've still got the outlines from the solidify modifier, but we got this. You also notice it's shaded uh, smooth. Use this to drive the emission shader. The reason that's purple is that's letting us know that it's not connected to anything. See if you notice how that turns red. Watch the noodle turns red. This is green. This little output is green. This is yellow. You can't put a green output into a yellow input. Uh, white, you can put anything into anything. Blue needs something blue coming into it. Do you get how it works? It's kind of giving you a clue as to what inputs and outputs are compatible with each other. So I have to convert that shader to something that can go into a a yellow output. So I go to Converters and I look down Shader to RGB. Now if I pluck that in there 
it takes whatever's coming out of this shader, changes it to an RGB uh, signal, and the RGB can go in here. And now that I've got RGB, that gives me the ability to mess with it. So I go into Converter again, pick a color ramp, and this stuff is in the other video. That's why I'm ripping through it so fast. If you think you're missing something, watch the other video. Uh, and I change this to constant, and there it is. Now it works like a threshold in, say, Photoshop. So I can move this to get just what I want, right? That's basically it. But to do the half tone, that gets fun. So let me show you that. going to add a texture in this case Voronoi it's the one I use all the time I love Voronoi put it in there and you get this which is interesting looking if you like that sort of thing turn the scale okay yeah that's kind of creepy so if you want to know how to do that there it is now you have it now, here's what I want. I want that Voronoi texture to be steady. In other words, you see it stretching around the edges. I don't want it to stretch. So I need to map it in a different way. So I'm going to add a texture coordinate. And by default, textures use generated. So if I'd stick generated in there, Nothing changes because that's what it's already doing. If I stick object in there, it'll change size basically, but it's still pretty much working the same way. What I want to do though is use um, either camera or window. Okay, now you see how it's still kind of jiggling around? It's not steady. It's because this is set for. Um, 3D, which means as it moves through space, it's moving through different textures. I set it to 2D, and there it is. Now you do notice, you may notice, that still these outer edges are moving a little bit. See, it seems like it's changing, changing shape around just a little bit. Let's try window. There. Now it's dead solid perfect, which is what I used to do the thing. So window, Voronoi, say that doesn't look like halftones. Wait for it, says I. One thing, some people don't know this, uh, if you turn the randomness of Voronoi down, you get this array. Right, now we've got that, which is fine, but we want it to look like halftone. I don't know the reason why it's looking a little little squished right now. Shouldn't be doing that. Well, if I ever figure out a reason, I'll let you know. I'm not going to worry about it, though. So, uh, again, grab a converter. Color ramp. I'm going to put it here. Set this to linear. I mean constant. And now I can do the same thing here that I did before. I get the dots. Why is that stretching like that? It should not be stretching like that. There's something that I'm doing that I'm missing here. Because it should not be stretching like that. Well, in any case, I'm going to add in a vector mapping node. I want to rotate that around Z about 40 degrees. Okay. And then just get it to whatever size I think looks right. That's it. Now, I there is, see, there is an elongation going on and I don't know the reason for that. It shouldn't be doing that. 
Nothing is scaled as far as I know. Let me check. There's some kind of scaling going on in something. And I don't understand why. Sure, I can do that to fix it. But why should I have to? Let me make a shader. What do you call it? Uh, yeah, those are all colors coming in. So I can do a mix RGB. Color. Mix RGB. Then run this into here. Run this. Into here. And wonder why I'm not seeing anything. Oh, there it is. Okay, what I'm getting is uh, a combination of the two. So I change this to like, mm, no, that's not what I wanted. If I change it to multiply, I get uh, that. Turn it up all the way. There you go. Now I've got that and that and that. But what I want is white. So I want my white area. I want this half tone to be the the mid area, and then I want to keep the black. Okay. So if I change this to screen, yeah, that gives me the white with the half tone. I could probably move. No, no, no. I can't do it that way. That just changes the the half tone, right? Oh, that moves it around. Okay. So I want that much half tone, and I want the and then this changes the yeah changes the level and size of the half tone. We're coming back to that because that's important. In fact, that's where we're going uh, in a second. So I also want to add another copy of this exact same thing I could run like copy this stuff and run it off this same shader and really that's what I should do but it will make the layout look complicated but screw it we'll let the layout look complicated put that down here I'm gonna feed this into it so they're both running from the same shader and then I'm gonna add another one of these down here so that this feeds into here this goes into here and then if I turn this off that should look the same as it did before and now I have the option of doing whatever I'm going to do with this one so I'm going to put this one in the bottom here I'm going to change this to multiply and turn this up and that gives me my black and now I can pull this down to reveal as much of the half tone as I want now we're almost all the way to the shader that was in the um, video and remember the scaling that I did on the X here shouldn't be necessary I don't know what's going wrong right now. These are the kind of things that happen sometimes in Blender, and I'm just clueless. Uh, what's weird about it is this is the exact same file that I'm using. I just took out the shader, and I'm recreating it, and for some reason it's coming in deformed. I can't explain it. If it happens to you, though, just fiddle with stuff. So, here's the problem. This is not what we did. This is what I started with, actually. And then I decided, well, I'd like that halftone, the part of it that exists, I'd like that to actually look like a halftone. And in halftones, the dots get smaller as it gets lighter, and they get thicker. Right now, it just looks like a, a screen print, like they use in, like, um, what do you call it, manga comics. They used to do it with an old uh, transfer. You know, you have dots on a sheet and you just lay it on your paper and rub over it with a stick and it transfers the dots onto the paper. It's a way of doing halftones instead of cross-hatching. 
when you're doing original art, you know, using traditional materials. So that's not the effect I want. Although it was when I started, but then I thought, wouldn't it be cooler if it actually did a halftone? So the way you do that is, is trying to remember how I did that. I need the color ramp. Let's see if I if I move this up, it gets darker. They get bigger and darker. If I move it down, it gets small. So what I want is for the shading to come through here. Well, we have the shading right here. So I believe all I have to do is grab one of these, put it here, and then run the shader into it. And that's pretty much it. I think mix at about 0.5. Then adjust this to get the density that I want, which is I want it to be. Yeah, there it is. That's about right. Okay, this is still just run in real time. I didn't bother rendering this. That's why you can see the thing running around. But that's uh, that's basically it. Now I'm going to be giving you the original file. Not the one I just made here, but the original file is what you're going to get. You're going to get the, the file with the animation and no shader. You can set it up yourself. And you're also going to get a file finished version. Do whatever you like with. Now I want to show you very briefly how I did that big giant cloud. It's ridiculously easy. That's why I said... I was going to do it at the end, and it's no big deal. The way I did that was grab the original shape, hit Shift-D, and just pull it out. Do that again. And look from a different angle. Do that. Do that. And that's pretty much it. And if I get rid of the selection, they all just kind of blend together. You can't tell it's just copies of the same shape. If I uh, go over here and just turn off the displace modifier, okay, that's all it is. Anyway, hope you found this helpful. If you did, comment, let me know. If you have any questions, if there's uh, buttons you didn't understand, things you can't figure out how to do, things that aren't working the way they work for me, for you, comment, ask questions, I'll answer them. See you in the next one.